Amanda Marcotte, author of such incisive pieces as The Tyranny of a Home-Cooked Meal, has come back with another fearless feminist defense of the downtrodden. When the mother of an unborn child is jailed for manufacturing methamphetamine and given an enhanced sentence because she endangered her child by both exposing him to the harmful chemicals involved in making meth as well as straight up smoking it, Amanda Marcotte leaps into action. For the child? Ah, no, no. Children are oppressive. Amanda argues that Lacey Weld, the addict that, again, brought her unborn child to work at a meth factory and got the kid high as a kite in the process, shouldn't be facing the consequences she is. She says that Lacey shouldn't get jail time just for being arrested while pregnant and worries that it will open the door to all sorts of policing pregnant women's behavior. That's right, folks. Being punished for getting your baby high is misogyny. I can just see Amanda Marcotte shaking her fist. That darn patriarchy. What's next? Jail time just for being pregnant during a high-speed car chase? Jail time just for being pregnant during a drunken bar brawl? And what about when the baby's born? Should a woman get extra jail time just for drunk driving with a kid in the back seat? Oh. Oh, wait, oh. That's child endangerment. Something every state in the Union has a problem with. Let's back up a bit. Can we, can we go back to talking about unborn children? And can we call them fetuses instead? It's not like a nine-month-old fetus is really a child, right? <sighs> no, we're not calling them fetuses, Amanda. Look at the picture, Amanda. It's a baby that's gathering up the courage to leave the womb, Amanda. That's why it's an unborn child, Amanda. Now, this is an excellent case study in the different mindsets between a leftist and a sane human being. A normal person sees a problem, gets upset about it, and then goes into problem-solving mode. The goal is to find the conditions that cause that problem and try to change them so it doesn't happen again. As it happens, child abuse is one of those problems that most normal people really want to solve. Some try community outreach, some try punishments through the legal system. Again, normal people see harming children as especially wrong, because children are more vulnerable and have less agency than adults. They can't protect themselves as well as adults. They are more fragile than adults. Until they become adults and can fend for themselves, the problem solvers of society try to give kids a little extra legal protection. So normal people dislike child abuse, and because of that, they try to prevent child abuse from actually happening. What about leftists? Leftists are too afraid of problems to solve them, so they have to find some way of pretending they don't exist. The goal is to find a way to ignore the conditions that cause the problem, ignore the problem itself, and just make those bad feelings go away. To redefine that problem until it doesn't exist. As it happens, sometimes the problem leftists want to disappear and ignore is child abuse. Leftists dislike the bad feelings that child abuse triggers, and because of that, they try to pretend that child abuse doesn't exist. If anyone's followed the Lena Dunham story, you'll find some parallels there. Long story short, in Lena's memoir, she admits to sexually molesting her seven-year-old sister growing up, says she acted like a sexual predator towards her younger sister, and this is in her own words, and then when people found out about it, she tried to argue that bribing an underage girl for sexual favors was just one of those weird things kids do. You know, like masturbating in the same bed. Reality said she did a horrible thing, so she tried to argue reality away. Amanda Marcotte tries to do the same thing in the Lacey Weld case. The following is a direct quote from her article for the purpose of explaining some of the rhetorical tricks at play here. As the National Advocates for Pregnant Women's NAPW's letter states, giving a person an extra long sentence because of her pregnancy status constitutes separate and unequal treatment of pregnant women. The justification offered by the judge in Weld's case is that Weld is extra guilty because she put her unborn child at a substantial risk of harm. 
but Weld was not convicted of smoking meth. According to the press release, the DOG justifies the enhanced penalty in part because Mrs. Weld apparently uses methamphetamine while pregnant, writes in APW in its letter. Drug use rather than possession, however, is not a crime under either Tennessee or federal law, and as the press release admits, Mrs. Weld was convicted of manufacturing, not possession of, methamphetamine. Tennessee law allows enhanced sentencing if the victim is especially vulnerable, but Weld was not convicted of victimizing her son. Those six extra years were for a crime. That isn't a crime in Tennessee at all. Weld's son was born sick and, as Gwyn writes, tested positive for opioids and methamphetamine. That probably makes you angry, and it should, but it doesn't mean that she should be locked up for extra time. <sighs> Look at the scare quotes over unborn. Look at the scare quotes of a substantial risk of harm. Surely it wasn't that bad, right? Besides, she wasn't convicted for smoking meth, just manufacturing it, no big deal. Look at how the enhancement for creating a substantial risk of harm to a minor got mystically transmogrified into an extra long sentence because of her pregnancy status. Look at how the entire second half of that paragraph rests on ignoring the in part when the quote says, According to the press release, the Department of Justice justifies the enhanced penalty in part because Mrs. Weld apparently used methamphetamine while pregnant. Oh, and there, right at the end, a clear values statement. Lacey Weld shouldn't serve jail time for addicting her baby to methamphetamine. You can be angry about it, just don't do anything about it. What is the other part of the Department of Justice justification that Amanda is desperately ignoring? Well, here is the actual press release from the Department of Justice. This case is unique because Weld used and manufactured meth while in her ninth month of pregnancy. Her baby was born severely drug addicted and suffered from withdrawals for almost six weeks. Departments of Children's Services case manager, Lenny Vaughn, testified that in the approximately 50 cases she has investigated involving drug-addicted babies, this case was by far the worst, with this baby suffering extreme harm. Judge Varlin determined that the enhancement for creating a substantial risk of harm to a minor which resulted in a six offense level increase to Weld's guideline range, was justified due to her using and manufacturing meth while pregnant. Video evidence from the investigation showed that Weld was in a meth lab for approximately 40 minutes, where she cooked and used meth. Tennessee Bureau of Investigation Special Agent Matt Thompson testified about the extremely hazardous conditions, including the toxic fumes and explosive environment surrounding that meth lab. Ha. Huh. Well, what do you know? Turns out, Lacey didn't get those six extra years just for smoking meth after all. Looks like Amanda missed some trivial details like toxic fumes, an explosive environment, and the worst case of a drug-addicted baby the caseworker had ever seen. Amanda knew this, which is why she made sure not to quote the full reason from the press release. That would be bad. So like this abused child, Amanda pretended that this information didn't exist. That's how much lying dodging, twisting, and justifying that she had to do to reach the conclusion that those six extra years for, for a crime that isn't a crime in Tennessee at all. Her article ignores the crimes Lacey was convicted of that factored into the sentencing and then argues against the sentencing because Lacey was arrested while pregnant. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Drug use may not be a crime in Tennessee, but child endangerment is. Lacey didn't receive an enhanced sentence just for drug use, but also for manufacturing meth, which she did get convicted for. Getting jail time for being arrested while pregnant is not what happened. Getting jail time for addicting her unborn child to meth is what happened, and that's why she got the enhanced sentencing. 
I'm sure you checked your facts before you wrote this piece, which makes you a liar at best and an advocate for child abuse at worst. Ah, uh, but Amanda... Amanda's not done yet. She goes on to write, It's hard to imagine that anyone who actually cares about this child's well-being thinks it's a good idea to break up his family and separate him from his mother for an extra six years of his childhood. I mean... When you're hallucinating away drug abuse and child abuse, I'm sure it does seem kind of strange. Hey, you're putting a woman in jail just because she was pregnant. What gives? What? Toxic fumes? What toxic fumes? What? Yeah, those events do sound pretty hard to explain in hallucinated rabbit world. But how does it sound in the real world? Let me give it a shot here. Hey. You're exposing your unborn child to Schedule II controlled substances and are most likely going to continue to do so because you're an addict. Let's put this kid with your family and put you behind bars. Hopefully the consequences for your actions will make you realize that what you did was wrong or at least prevent you from doing it again. And hopefully your sister can at least do better for your kid than bringing him to a meth factory. Yeah, that was damn near impossible to imagine, Amanda. I'm going blind from the mental hoops I had to jump through to envision such an improbable world. <sighs> let, let me try one of those quotes. It's hard to imagine that anyone who actually cares about this child's well-being would be using every rhetorical trick in the book to marginalize that child's suffering while at the same time arguing that child abuse shouldn't be punished because the mom did it. It's not that difficult a concept. She got more time than other people because not only did she manufacture meth, but she also exposed her unborn child to dangerous substances while doing it and on top of that, use meth while pregnant, resulting in what the Department of Children's Services case manager called the worst of the 50 cases of drug-addicted babies she's ever seen. To people not at war with reality, watching some salon airhead vomit all over herself trying to excuse child abuse is either disgusting or pathetic, depending on how strong your stomach is. So, now that you've seen how the sausage is made, how leftists like Amanda Marcotte warp reality to craft a narrative, you, a problem-solving kind of person, are probably wondering what to do the next time some leftist comes at you with an insane demand and a barrel of manipulated facts, lies, and half-truths. What is the most effective course of action the next time someone starts tossing around the idea that I don't know, we should stop putting women in jail for anything. Do not get caught in the trap of debating leftists with facts. As we've seen, facts are something that rabbits try desperately to hallucinate away. Anyone attempting to debate a leftist with facts is going to be slandered, misrepresented, misquoted, and ultimately ignored because they're just not interested. If you try to argue from a position of reason, you will get called out for hating women and wanting them to suffer, never mind if you do or don't. Anything to make you disappear so that they can continue their insane demands. You don't give them facts, but you don't lie to them either. You give them the truth, the only truth they really understand. What that truth is is the subject of another post, but here's an example from this case. If I were debating Amanda Marcotte, for example, on a talk show or a news call-in, I would not show her a video deconstructing her arguments point for point. I would say this, I feel nothing but contempt for someone so weak that she gets her power trip not even from abusing children herself, but by defending their abusers. Someone that fragile is going to trip on reality and shatter. Who's going to pick up the pieces when she inevitably breaks down? Normal people aren't in the business of helping child abuse advocates. Who will be in her corner? Other leftists? Don't make me laugh. <laughs>